Back in 1 Thessalonians, we're going to pick it up, chapter 5. Now, remember, we learned last night about verses 13 through 17. And that's where people get the so-called rapture doctrine. And we went to different places like 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We went to, um, we went to a few different places to, to show you that Christ only returns once. He doesn't return and then people are taken away and then he returns again. It's written of that the day of the Lord is when Christ returns and we are all turned into spiritual bodies. And remember the subject of this First and Second Thessalonians. The subject is pretty much all about the return of Jesus Christ and how it will come to pass. So we're going to keep learning about it. We're going to finish this First Thessalonians and pick it up in the second epistle. And we're going to keep learning about how Jesus Christ will return and the events that precede it. So we're going to pick it up in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, and it reads, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. See, it's written, we don't know the hour, we don't know the day, but we do know the seasons. We know that the Antichrist comes first, as we find out in this second epistle of Thessalonians, as it's written in so many different places in Mark 13, Matthew 24, Luke 21. You are to know the seasons and to be a watchman so that we are not deceived. Verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Why does it come in as a thief in the night? Because people think that God's already returned. The Antichrist sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. And everyone in the world almost is worshiping him. So they're not looking for the return of Jesus Christ. They think that he's already here. They're rejoicing. That's why it will come as a thief in the night. They're, they're not expecting Christ when they think he's already here. Verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety... Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Travail upon a woman with child, as it's written in Matthew 24, it, it speaks about, it says, And there will be wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. So what's the opposite of wars and rumors of wars? Peace. And then it goes on to say that, the, that this is the beginning of the labor pains. That's meaning that it's, gonna, it's the beginning of the birth of a new age into the, into the millennium and then on into the third earth age. And people are going to be saying, oh, it's, it's world peace because Revelation 13, the Antichrist does bring world peace. He puts together a one world system. Check out that Revelation chapter 13. But everyone's going to be saying it's, it's world peace. Our Savior has returned. Thank the Lord. But it's a false peace. Verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that, day should not, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are not in darkness because you know the Scripture of God's Word, which is the light. You understand the Scripture. You've studied it so that you're ready for the end times to come and that you know the chronological order of events. Verse 5, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of the darkness. You have, you have the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, of the light, and you have the Prince of Darkness, which is Satan. We are of the light. And it's, as we, we did go to Revelation chapter 11 last night, verse 2 talks about the holy city Jerusalem will be tread under foot 42 months. That's a, Satan, that's a prophecy concerning Satan and his reign. But then the very next verse says the witnesses will have power 1,260 days. That's the prophecy of God's children. The light is of God, darkness is of Satan. Verse 6. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Always be a watchman. Stay in the scripture, watch current events so you know exactly what's going on in the world so you can be ready. Verse 7. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. Not only are they drunken with wine, they're, they're drunken with false, with false teachers and false prophecy. Being taught that they're going to fly, that the, the pastors hunt souls to make them fly, as we, wrote it, as we read in Ezekiel chapter 13. 
they're so drunk with the false teaching of the Bible, they're not ready to know what's going to happen in the end times. And not to mention the, the literal facts that if you are a drunkard, if, if you stay drunk, if you stay under some type of substance, you're not going to be ready to face the false god. That's exactly what Satan wants. You're, you need to have your, your mind completely pure and ready so that you can be ready for the end times. Because remember, that's what the subject of this book is all about, the, this first and second Thessalonians, about the coming of Jesus Christ, the second advent. Verse 8, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Now this refers to Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm, I'm going to go there. This would be the gospel armor. And uh, it's just you got Colossians, then Philippians before that, and then Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Now what this, what this chapter is about is it's, it's basically teaching you how to be a good servant to God. It's, it's teaching you how to act not only when you're by yourself, but also when you're amongst others so you can be a good example. We're going to pick it up, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He's got many tricks. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Understand the war that we fight is a spiritual war. Especially those of you who do study God's word that know the truth. Satan wants to get to you worse than he does anybody. Satan is going to come hard after you to those of you that do love the Lord, that study the Word of God. He's going to come after you. Don't let that affect you. Put on the armor of God that we're about to read about. Verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. What's the evil day? Satan arrives sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Stay prepared. Learn God's word. 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. When you have true faith in God's word, the fiery darts of Satan can't come against you. Remember Luke chapter 10 verse 19, we have power over all of our enemies, over serpents, over scorpions, that includes Satan himself. 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is that two-edged sword, God's tongue that cuts both ways. Let's go back to Thessalonians. Picking it back up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. God is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants to reward us at Christ's return. 10. Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. That word edify means to, it's as if you were to build a house. We are to edify the brethren. When we see them messing up, when we see them going through a hard time, we are to lift them up and we are to, we are to make sure that they know that if they're doing something really bad, that we need to let them know they need to stop that. We are to be there for the brethren. And as it's written in Matthew chapter 7, verse 5, it says, um, take the before you go to take out the little piece of straw out of someone else's eye, you take the beam out of your own eye. You get right with God first. That way you are able to edify and help others. Verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. 
there again, warn them that are unruly. If you see someone really messing up out here, you go talk to them, say, man, you, you got to stop doing that. You know, you, you got to get right with the Lord. And comfort the feeble minded. That means the faint at heart. Make sure that, that every, those are okay, your, your brothers and sisters in Christ. And be patient toward all men. Not everyone is going to understand the truth right away. That's why we're to be fishers of men. You throw a little truth out there, and then some will latch on to it, and then they, they'll be so hungry for the truth they can't get enough of it. But you, you be patient. You, you teach the true Word of God, and the people will latch on to it. Verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Don't be the avenger. God is our avenger. You don't have to, like it says, don't render evil for evil. And, and this is pretty much quoting Romans chapter 12. I'm, I'm going to go there so we can, we can see ex exactly basically where this is coming from. Romans chapter 12. You don't have to avenge yourselves. God will always avenge His, His little ones. And th this, this chapter is kind of teaching us how to be practical. And, and as it's written in the, I think it's the second verse, it says, don't be conformed to, to the image of the wicked. Don't start acting like the wicked do. But have your mind transformed so that you can prove that which is good in Jesus Christ. We're going to pick it up, verse 17, chapter 12, Romans. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now with some people it's just simply not possible. Some people you just got to stay away from them. That's, that's not your fault. But some people you got to stay away from. But if it be possible, live peaceably with all men. 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. You let God take care of it. And I'll tell you, when the first time that you just decide to, to not say anything to someone that's coming against you, that you, you just stay silent, you just, you just let somebody freak out on you, as long as it's not physical, you always defend yourself. But you will feel so rewarded at, at that time when you just you let everything just slide off your back. And you let God take care of it for you. Verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. That's the vengeance that we want. The vengeance of God is much worse than anything we could do to somebody. You do good to your enemies and let God bring those coals of fire on our enemy's head. He is our avenger. Verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Such good advice from our Father. Back to Thessalonians. Back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Be thankful always to God. Pray without ceasing. See, you don't have to pray out loud, and I would probably even say it's, it's better not to pray out loud, so... That the so that people aren't so people don't hear maybe your future plans and the wicked can't try to affect you. You can pray to God all throughout the day. You just He hears your thoughts. You can always be praying to Him if something really good happens. You just thank Him real quick. You can be praying to God all throughout the day. Verse eighteen. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Always give thanks because all gifts do come from our Father. That's why it says we, we should not boast of anything because nothing good that we do is really done by us. It's the gifts that our Father gave us. 19. Quench not the Spirit. Now this word quench means extinguish. And yes, we are always to let the Holy Spirit guide us. If you quench, if you extinguish the Spirit then you're just going to be walking around out here just doing your own will. Who knows what you're going to be doing? Do not extinguish the Spirit. You let the Holy Spirit guide you. And even a, a more serious tone to, to this verse, 
As we know from Mark 13, verses about 9 through 13, your ultimate destiny of God's elect is to be delivered up before the sin of God of Satan, before the false God, and to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Then when it speaks of this same thing in Luke chapter 12, it says in verse 10 that, um, that to blaspheme the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. If you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that means that you are delivered up before the Antichrist and you choose to not allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, meaning you basically decide to worship Satan actually knowing that he is Satan. And that is the only unforgivable sin, the only one. It's Luke chapter 12, verse 10. Don't extinguish the Spirit. Verse 20. Despise not prophesyings. Now, what is, what is prophecy? Where are these prophecies coming from? The Word of God. Isaiah, Jeremiah, I could go on and on. The prophecies that we are to know are in the Word of God. Mark 13, chapter 23 says, Behold, I have foretold you all things. And I would be really careful of somebody that starts saying, Oh, I'm a prophet. God told me this to prophesy to everyone else. I would be real careful of somebody that says that. And especially right here, next verse. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. How do you prove all things? In the Word of God. If a, if a preacher is teaching what the Word of God says, if it lines up, good. He's a man of God. If he's teaching it out of his own heart, like Ezekiel 13 was all about, if he's teaching something that doesn't match up with the Word of God, he's a false prophet. You prove what any person that claims to be of the cloth says in the Word of God. 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. you you got to keep up a good reputation because it, if you don't, people aren't going to listen to what you have to say about the Bible and about God. You have to keep that good reputation so people will come to you and oh, so you can really help others. People aren't going to ask you for help if you're acting all crazy out here. But if you abstain even from the appearance of evil, if you don't become a stumbling block to others, you will be able to help others in many things and most importantly, bringing them the truth of God's Word. 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is our ultimate goal, right? To be preserved blameless, to be not have a single blemish when Jesus Christ does return. And all you have to do is repent of your sins. You just ask for forgiveness, repent sincerely because you can't fool God. And then from that point, you are blameless. We're always, we're always going to fall short, of course. <laughs> but when you do fall short, just repent of your sins and you are forgiven. 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. God fulfills all his promises that he's ever written, that he's, that he's ever given us. And has he called you? Are you ready to answer the call? 25. Brethren, pray for us. Always pray for the brethren, the, the Christian, our Christian brothers and sisters. Keep them in your prayers. See, prayer is such a powerful thing that I think a lot of people don't really realize how powerful prayer really is. And if, if, you, if you're doing the right thing, and, and, but always pray in God's will, that's the key. You pray in God's will, and if you're doing the right thing, you will, you will see some things happen. 26. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. That means be, be a good friend to them, have, be fond of them, be a good brother to them. Whether it be an actual brother or a brother in Christ, we are all part of the one body of Christ. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren, now, that's all the holy brethren. That's not necessarily everyone. You're able to spiritually discern those that are sincere about they want to learn God's word and those that aren't. But he's saying all the holy brethren, those that are true Christians, you teach this gospel to them. You teach them this epistle because they are meant to know the truth and they do have a destiny to fulfill. 28. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now we're going to get into this second epistle of Thessalonians, and 
It's thought that, well, first of all, we know that this book of Thessalonians is probably the first one that Paul wrote, first and second. And he, he's at Corinth at this time, but this is probably the first, the first buried books that Paul wrote. And see, he, he brought up how this second epistle very shortly after the first one, because, because there, were, there were so many false teachers that were twisting the doctrine. What do you know? So many people twist 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17, and they say that that's, that's the rapture, that's, that's when we fly away. That's a false teaching. And it even says in this second chapter of 2 Thessalonians, it says, Brethren, be not shaken in mind by word, by spirit, or by letter as from us. That's Paul's words. He's saying, don't let 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 mess you up. He's saying, I'm going to bring you a new epistle now, and I'm going to let you know exactly how the coming of Christ is to come to pass. And when we get into this second chapter, you're going to really see how plainly he writes it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And as, as you know, this is Silas and Timothy, same people. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God, the only true peace in this world is from God, is from our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity or the love of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. They've, they've learned this gospel of Jesus Christ, and now they're all getting along so good. They're loving each other. They've, they've learned who the true God is, who Jesus Christ, the true Savior is. And once again, Paul's saying, I'm so happy about this. I'm so proud of these people at Thessalonica. He, he's so happy because the love of God is just abounding there. You can't hide it, the true love of God in His Word. Verse 4, So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Remember, Paul keeps warning us, the wicked are going to come against you. If you are doing the true work of Christ, if, if you are teaching God's word, or even if, if you're just a good Christian, the wicked will come against you. Then what does verse 5 say? Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. That's saying these tribulations and persecutions that you're suffering, that's basically making it so indicative that you are a servant of God's word. And, and when you get through it, or, or more better said, when you let God get you through it, that is, God is so proud of you for that. It's a manifest token of your service when you do suffer tribulations, but you get through it. And it's written in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, such a beautiful verse. It says, the sufferings that we endure this, in this world are nothing compared to the are nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Romans chapter 8, verse 18, such a beautiful verse. The sufferings that we endure on this earth are nothing compared to be the glory that Christ is going to reveal to us. Nothing compared to the blessings that we will receive. Verse 6, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Once again, God says, Vengeance is mine. Let God avenge you. Verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When that day of the Lord cometh, then, yeah, people are going to be smited. The wrath of God is going to be poured out on them, but not on you. Not on those of you that do serve the Lord Jesus Christ, that do know the truth, that know the false Messiah comes first. That is, that is you will get so many blessings you can't even imagine it. Verse 9. Those who God takes vengeance on, verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. 
That would be at the end of the thousand year teaching period. Check out that Revelation chapter 20. Remember, Christ returns. We're all changed into spiritual bodies. Those who were deceived by the false Christ and those who didn't have a chance on this first earth age, or in this, this is the second earth age, but in these flesh bodies, they are students in the thousand year teaching period. And then at the end, when Satan is loosed a short season, those who follow him are cast into the lake of fire. Don't take my word for it. Read that for yourself. It's Revelation chapter 20, only about 15 verses or so, maybe a little longer. But it's very clear that you can't miss it. and It's just unbelievable how many people haven't read that. How they don't understand the chronological events because it's written so plainly. Verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, that's God's elect, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. When you heard the truth of God's word, you knew it was true. God's word is so exciting, it, it moves. You can, you can see how exciting it is. And there's pastors out here that they just they read maybe a verse or two and then they speak out of their own heart. They've obviously never read Ezekiel chapter 13 where it says God is against those that prophesy out of their own heart. No words of man are going to do anything for you. Not what I say or what anyone else says. It's the words of God that are life changing. Verse 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That is your calling to fulfill the will of God, to do his work, to bring the truth of others to others. Fulfill his calling. Do you feel like you're called? Verse 12 to face the chapter. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we get into this 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, like I said, Paul is going to teach it so plainly that no one can ever deny how the coming of Christ will be. You be ready for this. And remember, he says, don't be shaken in mind by spirit or by word or by letter as from us. He's going to explain it so very clearly here. Like I said, no one can ever deny the events that happen before Jesus Christ returns. Remember, that's basically the whole subject of these first and second epistles of Thessalonians, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, dear Father in heaven, Yahweh, thank you for bringing us together to study your word. and Thank you for revealing truth to us and for giving us the wisdom that we need to understand your word and to share it with others. Thank you for entrusting us with your word and with the truth of it so we can share it with others. And thank you for the wisdom you've always given us and that you will continue to give us. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious name, amen.